and welcome to Kingsway Online. It's great to have you here with us. As I'm sure many of you have noticed, we have got our church sign up ready in preparation for when we open up our building again on a Sunday, just at the end of this month, so it's not long to wait now. And we are just really excited to have people back in. And so thank you to everyone who's helping to make that possible. Thank you to Ken, who's been painting fences, to all the team who've been gardening. The church is looking great and we really appreciate all the hard work that people have been doing to make things ready. We just really feel that it is important that our community knows that we are here and we are here to point the way, to signpost people to Jesus. And hopefully our new sign will help with that. In the Bible it says in John 5 verse 39 that all of scripture points towards Jesus. And that at Kingsway Church is what we hope to do. We hope that we can point towards Jesus. And so over this week, just take every opportunity you can in your workplace, in your schools, to point towards Jesus. We've got some great things coming up on Tuesday night. We have got our prayer meeting, so you can book in using our phone number at the end of the service that will come on the screen. We'd love you to come and pray with us. Prayer is just such an important thing that we do here at Kingsway Church. And so if you've not been to a prayer meeting before, please come along. We wear masks, we're socially distanced. We are as COVID safe as possible. And so you can book in for that. So that's this Tuesday at 7.30. We have got our Quest team, we've got Helen Trask coming in a few minutes to give you some information about our kids work and so she's going to be telling you how our Quest kids work is going to be unlocking over these next few weeks. And our Thrive Youth is going to be back after their half term break, they're going to be back next Sunday so they're going to be back every Sunday night now, 6 till 7pm every Sunday night. We are really excited to be welcoming them back into the building as well next week. So there's lots of things going on. We want you to know that we are really praying for you at this time. We know that things are still a, a challenge and uh, we just want you to know that we are here for you. And so I just want to pray a blessing as we start today's service. Lord God, I just pray for everyone here. I pray that they would know your peace, that they would know your blessing. And as we prepare ourselves now to have a time of worship and to listen to your word, just open our hearts so that we can hear from you. We just pray that throughout this week, we can be a signpost to others to sign and show people Jesus. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Nothing compares to this What a wonderful name 
little update on Quest, our children's clubs at Kingsway. Um, so we're really lucky we were able to do, before half term, uh, we were able to do a session in the garden and bring all the children back on one Friday night. We were supposed to do two, but unfortunately rained on the one. Uh, but never mind, we had a blessed time on that first one. Uh, the children had such a great time uh, playing with each other, playing lots of games, lots of free time. Um, they had food, they had drink, they had crafts, uh, and just a really blessed time together. So we're aiming to do two more of those and bringing back all of our Quest children on a Friday night. So if you have a, ch a, ch if you have a child or some children who come on a Friday night to Quest, please book your space. Um, book in now with myself, Helen Trask. Um, and you can book that in for the 11th and the 18th of June and then hopefully we're going to be back in the building if we get the go ahead from Boris that we're hoping for back in the building on the 25th of June we would really value your prayers um, for a smooth transition back into uh, our, our uh, children's services obviously a lot has changed a lot of exciting changes um, and we're just praying that, that God just blesses everything we do and blesses our children and our team uh, and we just have a really lovely time. Uh, Todd groups will resume as well after half term. So if you could pray for our Todd groups, which have been uh, headed up by Liz and her team, that would be awesome. Thank you very much. And uh, we hope you have a lovely half term. Bye. Good morning. Well, here we are again, I'm in church, you are somewhere else, and you are watching me because I filmed this on my, on my iPhone, landscape, and then I fixed it to a little tripod. If you had told me at the start of lockdown that I'd be doing this, I would have laughed at you. I knew nothing about uploading to the cloud and downloading from the cloud and sending videos via WhatsApp and web transfer at my age, I tell you learning all these new tricks. But today I want to talk to you about lessons from lockdown. I'm sure we've all learned lots of new stuff. We've had to, haven't we? But I just want to talk about three things that I have learned, learned how to do new stuff. Lesson number one, old dogs can learn new tricks. The expression goes, you can't teach old dogs new tricks, but you can. Because whether you're young or old, we've all had to learn lessons during lockdown, how to do new stuff. Wearing face masks, socially distancing, quarantine, hands, face, space, uh, test and trace, lateral flow testing, and much, much more. You go into the shop or you go onto the bus or you go onto the train and you put your face mask on. We've learned to do that. I learned to do that the hard way because I'd walk from home down to the shops in the middle of Gornal Village, and then I'd be outside the shop and remember my face mask. It's at home, so I had to go back to fetch it. So this old dog learned uh, new tricks fairly quickly. We've had to learn how to Zoom, home meetings, via the internet, you know. Switch off the mute button, I was told several times. Also, you learn to position the screen so that people can't see stuff behind you in your home that might be embarrassing. Learning new tricks. Homeschooling. What a blessing, wasn't it? That was for our young families. Doctor's appointments via the telephone, giving your symptoms to the doctor's receptionist in some cases. How wonderful that was. Learning about the R rate. Exercising locally. And there were some different opinions about that. Shopping alone. Doing these lateral flow tests. We have all learned lessons during lockdown. So, if we can do new things for the government, then I think we can also do new things for the Lord. Because our God is the God of new things. Betty's poster in the entrance that was there as we went into lockdown, Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, God says, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? It's almost as if old dogs and young dogs have had to learn lessons in doing new things so that we can become a group of people who recognise and respond quickly to God's new things. 
Our God is creative and innovative. He is into new for old. He preserves old wineskins at the same time producing new ones. His mercies are new every morning. He upgrades, he uplifts, he upskills. On that first day of Pentecost that we celebrated, he was doing new things. I will pour out my spirit on all people. So it was no longer Jews only, but all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. This was to the next generation. Your young men and your old men, your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. It was multi-generational. And that's God's word to us, isn't it? On both men and women, I will pour out my spirit. It was no longer men only. The birth of the church demonstrated God doing new things. And he has never changed. He's the God of new things. As his followers, we need to get used to that. We need to learn the lesson. Because life post-pandemic will be very different to pre-pandemic. But it's all okay. It's fine. It's wonderful. Because our God inhabits a culture of new things. Lesson number one. Old dogs can learn new tricks. Lesson number two. Contentment. I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances, writes Paul. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, whether living in lockdown or free, whether socially distancing or hogging loved ones whether vaccinated or not, whether wearing a mask or wearing a garment of praise. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. That's the Apostle Paul, Philippians 4 and verse 12 with just one or two additions. I spoke about this recently, but I really sense that I needed to repeat it. It's a crucially important lesson to learn. Contentment. Contentment. The Christian faith is extremely functional. It's pragmatic. It deals in reality. What's happening now? Not what might happen or should have happened. Paul writes these words and he's chained in a prison cell. He's locked in a dungeon, shackles round his arms and round his legs. The Roman prison system felt no need whatsoever to feed their prisoners. All they did was lock them up. The only way that you stayed alive was if someone outside came and brought you food. If your mates forgot you, you died of starvation. There was no Uber Eats or Deliveroo or Just Eat. But from his cell, Paul writes to the church in Philippi, what a great time I'm having here, folks. And he wasn't being sarcastic either. He literally sings from his prison cell, Philippians 4 verse 4, always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Contentment, says Paul, comes from retraining your mind. It's lesson number two from lockdown. It's a learning process. He says, I have learned to be content. It doesn't just happen. It's something we learn. Contentment is learned. It's worked out. It's thought through. It's meditated on, it's studied. We work at contentment. And a big part of this lesson is that externals don't bring inner contentment. Paul learned that, and so must we. It's not what's happening out there, it's what's happening in here. If what's happening out there controls our feelings, then we are going to be riding constantly an emotional roller coaster. Up one day, Oh, down the next. I know some Christian wives who dread their husband's football team losing because it puts them in a foul mood. 
Some social media bloggers go into depression if they don't get many likes for their posting. Some Christians lose their sanctification if someone cuts them up when they're driving. Oh my goodness, can you believe that? If their boss, their manager, their head corrects them, corrects something they've done, some Christians sulk for days. And some Christians have a strop if their grown-up kids don't phone them every day, despite how busy their kids are. After revealing all this kind of conduct and far more, James says in chapter 3 and verse 10, My brothers and sisters, this should not be. These are externals that will destroy our contentment. So we learn to be content, whatever the circumstance. It's lesson number two. And it's been a big lesson for many of us to learn, hasn't it, during lockdown. Lesson number one, old dogs can learn new tricks. Lesson number two, contentment. I have learned to be content. Lesson number three, timing is everything. Boris has said repeatedly during lockdown that he follows the science. But what has caused the huge political uproars has been when he has followed the science. Lockdown, said the scientists. So he did, two weeks later. And the pandemic took off. All the vulnerable have now been vaccinated. Hospitals are coping, apparently, with new infections. So let's follow the roadmap. Let's cancel all restrictions. On the 21st of June comes the call. Yes, OK, he has said. But maybe not the 21st. Although it could be. It should be. Um, uh, it might be. He's afraid, isn't he, of getting the timing wrong again. And that's understandable. I'm filming this very early, Thursday morning. It could all change again by Sunday. Timing is everything. That's lesson number three from lockdown. You can do the right thing, but do it at the wrong time. Too soon or too late. I learned a formula for blessing many, many years ago, if there is such a, a thing as formula for blessing, but it goes something like this, right person, right place, right time. When you, the right person, are in the right place, the place where God wants you to be, and that could be the right house, the right church, the right job, the right college, the right location, the crucial third factor that triggers God's blessing is the right timing. Joshua 1 verse 10. Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross this Jordan here and go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your own. Three days from now, said Joshua, we'll claim our inheritance in God. Not today, not in a week's time, in three days. That is timing. But during those three days, Joshua sent two spies into the promised land. Go view the land, especially Jericho, he told them. So when they went and they met Rahab, a woman who made her living selling sex, but a woman who amazingly became part of the family tree of the Lord Jesus Christ, because she was the mother of Boaz, who was great granddad to King David. You couldn't make it up, could you? Those three days waiting to cross the River Jordan was so significant for Rahab and her offspring. Carry on with the story. Then the two men started back and said to Joshua, The Lord has surely given the whole land into our hands. All the people are melting in fear because of us. And on day three, over the Jordan they went. Now, Linked to timing is patience because timing entails waiting and waiting needs patience. As most of you know, uh, patience is not one of my, my greatest virtues. These YouTube services each week have often included several people taking part. And the item on the screen that you're watching may last just two or three minutes, that's all. 
but it can take two or three weeks to put together. So I send out a request. I explain to the person uh, what we need for the service, when we need it, and then I'll wait and wait and sometimes wait a bit longer. I may have to remind some people, text them. I really have appreciated everybody who has contributed. It's been brilliant. But patience, for me, has been a key, a key factor in producing these services. Some years ago, I began telling the Lord, Jesus, that I needed some help in ministry. Be still, came the answer. I'm really feeling the strain now, Lord. And there's all this new stuff I said. And I said it many, many times. Wait upon the Lord, came the answer. I'm old, Lord. I need someone younger to help me. My journal at this time makes very, very interesting reading. Lord, wait. But be still. That September last year marked the end of the waiting. Text, phone calls, conversations over coffee. And the Lord Jesus, the head of the church, sent his answer to my prayers. Pastor Deb, the answer to Kingsway's prayers too. She literally is a God send. I'm so glad that I waited. I'm so glad that I was still and didn't take premature action. I'm so glad that she waited too. Patience helped us get the timing right. As Boris has had to make such a life changing decisions about lockdown and needs to get the timing just right. Can I urge you to also learn lockdown lesson number three, please? The key to the blessing of God, which always adds and never impoverishes anyone, is the right person, the right place and the right time. You are unique. You are the apple of God's eye. Your blood bought, your spirit filled. Are you in the right place, the place that God wants you to be, house, church, job, college, group, ministry team, whatever. If you are, then the vital trigger to God's blessing is the right timing. So wait upon the Lord. Be still and know that he is God. Learn that waiting time is never wasted time. During Israel's three, sorry, during Israel's three-day wait, Joshua sent in the spies who met Rahab. Premature action by Joshua, if he had sent the troops in too soon, would have seen Rahab and her family killed. And she was to be part of God's son's genealogy. While we wait, God is doing stuff, unseen stuff. I remember a Methodist minister many years ago that gave me a prophetic word. He says, John, God is doing stuff behind your back. He's doing more stuff behind your back than in front of your face. I was waiting and nothing seemed to be happening. But God was working out, out of my earthly sight, working in the heavenlies. Timing is everything. So let me conclude. I'm sure we've learned lots of stuff during this pandemic, but these three things have really impacted me. And I can only speak from what I know, what I've learned. Number one, old dogs can learn new tricks. Let's learn quickly the new things that God is doing and get involved. They may be personal to us as individuals or it could be to us as, as Kingsway Church. Number two, be content. Don't allow externals to affect your contentment. This is a big lesson to learn, church, and to keep learning whatever is going on out there. And number three, timing is everything. Right person, right place, right time. And that's the key to blessing. But the timing may well demand waiting, which demands patience. But patience builds character. God bless you. I trust that my lessons have helped you this morning. Keep learning, keep listening, keep waiting. Speak soon. A huge thank you to Pastor John for his message this morning and also to our worship team and to Helen and all the Quest team and everyone who helps to make our services online run so smoothly. We really appreciate it and we've only got a few more weeks left. 
So make sure that you connect in again next Sunday. If you want to, make sure you come along to our Tuesday night prayer meetings. We would love to see you face to face. And you can remember to sign in by phoning our phone number that's going to be on the screen at the end of the service. I just want to pray a blessing for you as you go today. Lord God, we just pray for everyone here, protection upon them. We just pray that you would give them strength for the choices and decisions that they may have to make this week. And we just pray for your Holy Spirit to work through us into our families and into our workplaces and schools and communities. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. was rich I remember who I was I was lost I was blind I was running out of time sin separated the breach was far too wide but from the far side of the chasm you held me in your sight so you made a way across the great divide Left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside And there at the cross you paid the debt I owe Broke my chains, freed my soul for the first time I place laid inside my tomb of sin you were buried for three days but then you walked right out again and now death has no sting and life has no end
Oh. 